Hello guys, uh, welcome to another video. Okay, uh, this time I'm bringing you a, a different uh, kind of video. This one is uh, to show you uh, an Excel Visual Basic macro that I created for a personal use. So I want to share this with the YouTube community and uh, I hope you uh, find it useful and like it. Okay, so let me explain what the macro does. Okay, so uh, I'll get into more details and show you the code and review the code uh, line by line in just a moment. It's not that big, uh, but I'll show you the code and uh, teach you how to uh, do it uh, yourself in Excel. <coughs> okay, I'm using Excel 2016, so uh, you guys may have a different uh, version of Excel. So uh, I'm going to show you some uh, tips on this version which are kind of similar like in 2013 and probably 2010 Excel 2010 and 2013 so uh, but if you have a different version you need to uh, either uh, Google your version or you see uh, or find a video or search for a video on YouTube for your particular version okay so we'll uh, get into details of uh, of uh, the developer tab and that's why I mentioned the different versions of Excel because uh, that may be different for each one of us but uh, I'll get into that in just a, a moment so let me explain what the macro does okay so <coughs> I'll uh, I'll explain in a moment what uh, what these cells uh, indicate but what the macro does is once I press run here the macro will automatically move the cursor as if I was moving my mouse, if I, as if I was physically moving my mouse, you will see the cursor right now, I'm moving it. It's moving, so the macro will move the cursor. Uh, it will move it from left to right. It will also uh, press the left button, the left mouse button. I'm gonna press it right now here on, on cell B15 and I'm gonna select that cell. So I'm pressing it right now. Okay, I just pressed it, so the macro will do that as well. It will move the cursor from left to right. It will press the left uh, mouse button. It will give it one click. And it will also press a key in the keyboard, which is the num lock key on the right-hand side of the of the keyboard. It's the, uh, uh, the numerical keyboard. I'll show you that in just a moment. So basically, that's, that's all that this macro does. Okay, it just moves the cursor, clicks, on the on the cell or on whatever application you may have on on, on screen uh, it, uh, it it presses the left mouse button and it also presses the noon lock, noon lock key so we have three inputs for uh, for the screen or for the operating systems moving the mouse pressing the mouse button and pressing the keyboard okay so I'll explain the cells as I mentioned in just a moment the only cell that uh, you will need to modify is this one that's why I highlighted it in yellow and this is, this is the time to activate. Okay, so once we press the run button, the, the, the macro will be on a cycle, running and running and running, but it will move the cursor and uh, press the mouse, left mouse button and the num lock key uh, with this frequency. Okay, so you can set any desired time here in hours, hours, minutes, or seconds. Just uh, right now, I say I have set it to 10 seconds so that you guys can see it. It uh, doesn't uh, take much time, but you can set one hour, two hours, five hours, five hours, or combinations, hours, minutes, and seconds. You know, one hour with 15 minutes and 18 seconds, you know, or every 15 minutes, or every 14 minutes, or every 10 minutes, or every nine minutes. You know, whichever you, uh, you may need, whichever time, whichever frequency you may need to, to move the mouse, uh, you can set that in here. That's why this cell is highlighted in yellow. So I've set uh, 10 seconds right now. So the format for this cell is uh, like a time cell, 12, uh, 12 0, 0, 10 a.m. So just consider uh, as if uh, these are hours, minutes, and seconds, okay? So if you need, for instance, uh, 4 hours and 10 seconds, you would put a 4 here and it's 4 hours and 10 seconds, okay? Uh, uh, let me return 12. So I'm going to test it right now for you guys to see with 10 seconds. And uh, I, but I insist, I mean, as I mentioned, you can put five five minutes or any time, any time you desire. Okay. So let's go ahead and, and click the run button. Okay. So it's running right now. 
Okay, let me explain the cells. So in B1, we have the cursor position. We need to know the cursor position because we're comparing if the cursor is moving. It will start the counter, this one time remaining, as soon as you uh, stop moving the mouse. Okay, it will it will sense the the moment that you stop moving the mouse and it will start counting backwards here. And it starts with 10 seconds because we told it, told the micro, told it to do uh, activate every 10 seconds so it starts counting backwards 10 seconds okay so B1 you will see the cursor position so I'm gonna go over here on the left uh, top uh, corner you see 0 0 so these are pixels I'm moving in the Y axis right now you will see that the Y uh, variable increases or decreases depending on where I uh, set the, the cursor now I'm gonna move on the X axis you will see here that the X variable increases and decreases okay and if I move anywhere on my on my screen you will see that it will give me the uh, uh, the the uh, uh, pixel position in X and Y the coordinate uh, in X and Y uh, axis okay okay uh, time elapsed so this is the time uh, that it starts counting after you stop moving the mouse so I'm gonna stop right now you will see it starts counting one second two seconds three seconds four seconds okay uh, and this counter is uh, hours, minutes, and seconds. The next counter here, seconds elapsed. This is just a decimal counter for seconds, so we'll be counting in, in decimals. So I'm going to stop right now, so you will see one point uh, decimal. You see why it, it gets off up to 0 0.9, 0 0.8. Okay, it starts, it's just that. It's just counting as soon as, as uh, you stop moving the cursor. The next cell be uh, four time remaining. So this is these are the seconds remaining for the uh, macro to start moving the cursor uh, press the left mouse button and press the num key uh, the num lock key on your keyboard okay uh, so I'm gonna stop right now and you will see that this one would start decrementing okay so 10 9 8 7 6 5 etc okay and B5 is the times the macro it uh, it gets activated so let's say you set it up for every 10 minutes to be to move the mouse and press the left mouse button and the numlo key every 10 minutes so and let's say you leave it there for one hour so you leave it there for one hour if you, and if you come back to your computer you'd see here a six it activated six times every 10 minutes in one hour okay so you will see this is just a counter of how many times it moves by itself Okay, and the next one, B6, is uh, just the counter, the global counter on how much uh, or, or how much it's been activated. You know, regardless of it if it has uh, moved the mouse or the cursor or if it hasn't. So in total, uh, since I press the run button, it's been running. The code has been running for three minutes and ten seconds right now. Okay, and this. Uh, never gets refreshed so this uh, gets updated regardless if it's uh, if it's moving or not moving or or your uh, whatever you know so and the last one time to activate is the time you needed to be cycling and moving the mouse okay so I'm gonna stop moving the mouse right now and you will see that when this timer go gets to zero it will move from left to right it will press the, the left mouse button it will select another cell like this I'm doing right now or like this and it will press the num lock key you won't see anything when it presses the num lock key because uh, or depending on the computer you have some computers you might see a, a, a visual representation here on the uh, right uh, uh, bottom side of your screen or you will see a LED uh, light on your keyboard you might see that uh, but it, that's uh, just uh, another input for the keyboard that it's not intrusive you know it's not like pressing a key with a letter or a number it's just a change of state in the keyboard so that uh, the operating system or any application that's uh, running at that time senses a, a keyboard input Okay, so you will uh, you will uh, you will have three inputs: the mouse, the cursor move moves as this, the physical mouse is has been is uh, is moving. Uh, the left the left mouse button will be clicked. That's the second input, and the third input will be the num lock key. Okay, you will see also that uh, this cell uh, before this one uh, will be will change the color. So uh, whenever a threshold is uh, reached like uh, over 70% of this time uh, has passed it will change to yellow 
uh, from 70 to 80 percent is yellow from 80 to 90 percent it will change to orange from uh, 90 to 95 percent uh, it will change to red and from 95 to 100 percent it will uh, be uh, uh, swapping or changing between red and white so background red uh, font color white or background white font color red okay you will see that in just a moment okay I'm gonna stop moving the, the mouse right now and I'm gonna position myself here on C13 so you will see when it activates you will see the cursor moving from left to right as I'm moving, I'm moving it right now it will move automatically by itself from left to right it will select cell C13 and it will press the numblock key. Of course, we won't see the numblock key do anything, but uh, that will be that will happen, and I will show you the code in just a moment. Okay, I'm gonna stop right now. Okay, our counters are incremented, and before it's been decremented, four three, it's changed to yellow, orange, red, and there it moved. You see, C4, I mean, I mean C13 ha has been selected, and it will move again now in three, two, one. It will move again. There it moves and select again. I'm gonna move my mouse now and it's gonna stop because I'm moving it. It's not counting or decrementing the counter. But let's say I'm, uh, I'm gonna stop here on E5. So it's now running again. It's decrementing before and it will select E5. It's moving and it's selected E5. Okay, that's all that this macro does. Okay, so I had a need to, to uh, uh, to have a code like this, okay, wait, before that, how to stop the macro? I just did that without telling you guys. Okay, so the macro is running, so to stop it, you don't need to press here. If you press here, it won't stop. Um, uh, there are two ways to stop the macro, either, either double-clicking on a cell, so as if you were going to input something on the cell, so I'm gonna uh, double-click, uh, let's say on this one, double-click with the left mouse button, and it stops okay as if I was going to input something some text here or the other way is inputting text in into the cell into any cell you can click any cell let's say this one and I'm gonna type a letter letter F on my keyboard and that will stop the macro because I'm gonna input text on this cell okay so I'm typing right now F so I typed an F and it stopped okay so those are the two ways you can stop the macro double clicking on a cell Okay, it's running right now. I'm double clicking on this cell, it stops. Or just uh, writing on a cell, typing on a cell. Okay, um, so I was mentioning that I had a need uh, to do this with my mouse, and uh, of course, there are some commercial products, some software that you can download, but uh, I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to install uh, anything intrusive into my computer. It may have a virus, you know, or a Trojan, or uh, who knows. So I wanted to de do this by myself. And something that everyone has, or everyone with Office, Microsoft Office has, it's uh, Visual Basic for Excel. So something in Excel is uh, very easy to, to do. Uh, and uh, I did it, and it's uh, working. I've been using it uh, for quite some time now, and I wanted to share this with uh, the YouTube community, so that's why I'm doing this video. Okay, so let's uh, let me show you the code, and I'll show you how to uh, do this by yourself, and do this on on your computer. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to uh, open the Visual Basic uh, Macro Editor. So as I mentioned earlier, I have uh, uh, Office 2016. It may, this may differ depending on your uh, Office version or your Excel version. So if this doesn't work for you because you have a different version, just Google or, or look for a YouTube video showing you how to activate the developer tab for Visual Basic so, or the developer uh, menu or tab. Okay, so I don't have it activated right now here or Visual or you cannot visualize it. So we're going to do that right now. So you should go here to the File tab, go here to the Options section okay then here to customize ribbon and then here on the right hand side you will see we have an option here that is the developer option you select that option click ok and now you will see that over here on the top menus you will see now the developer tab okay so you need to do that first click on developer and then on click on visual basic okay so this is the visual basic editor uh, let me drag this here so you will see that this is the file that I have opened mouse move 
XLSM, you need to save the file as a macro activated uh, document. So you need to select XLSM. We'll see that in just a moment. And here is the module. In modules, here is the macro. Okay. So this is the macro. Uh, the code it's not that big. I'll show you what uh, what it does. And then we'll create a new document, a blank document. So is this is something that you guys will be doing. So I'll show you how to do it. And uh, and so that uh, you have the need for this, you can do that on your computer. Okay, so let's start reviewing the code and I'll go ahead and, and mention what each of the lines uh, does. Um, okay, so this first part are the declaration public and, and some public declarations and constant uh, public and private declarations and some constants that uh, we're declaring here. Okay, so the first private declaration is a function that we're going to need and be using for our macro. It's the set cursor position, and this is for a library for uh, user 32 library uh, for Microsoft. So you will type this. Uh, we're also going to be declaring a uh, uh, this private declaration mouse event um, with all, all of these definitions here and uh, variables uh, also uh, these constants as part of the mouse event uh, we are going to be uh, declaring this uh, private constants as uh, left down so this is the left actual the uh, left mouse button when you press on it left down when you depress the button left up, uh, I also have here the right mouse button, which uh, uh, of course is used for different uh, purposes, for different features. We are not going to use the right uh, mouse button in this macro, but I decided to leave this here in case you may need it in the future so that you are aware that uh, this can also be included in a macro code and, uh, and used or in a Visual Basic code. So this is the right mouse button when you press it down and up. Of course, let me show you. If you press the left mouse button, this happens. You select uh, a cell. If you press the right mouse button, I'm going to press it right now, this happens. Uh, 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 another menu pops up and you can do several things or different things. Okay, so we're not using the right mouse button for this macro, but I'm going to leave it there in case, uh, in case anyone needs it in a future, for a future project. Okay, the next one is uh, uh, we're going to declare this uh, subroutine slip uh, and this is just to pause the code for a defined uh, uh, milliseconds that you need. We, I will explain that in just a moment as soon as we get into that uh, uh, section, into that instruction within the code. Uh, okay, we have another function hit here, get cursor position, so remember we uh, have one here to set the cursor position and this one is to get cursor position so we're gonna read the cursor position with this one uh, public type variable point appy and with two uh, variables uh, x as long and y so are the axis x and y axis okay then we start with the subroutine here uh, it's the mouse move uh, I will start scrolling in with the code and later afterwards when I when we finish uh, reviewing the code I will scroll back up and pause for a few seconds uh, so that you can take screenshots or pause the YouTube, the YouTube video and uh, you can uh, copy the code and write it for yourselves okay so I'll do that in in, in, uh, in a few moments okay so let's start here so sub, uh, mouse move this is the name that I gave it to the subroutine okay so I have here a a variable along cursor position as point appy that we declared over here as public. Uh, start time as double. Uh, seconds elapsed as double. These are variables and minutes elapsed as string. Okay, so uh, I am assigning the timer value that that's the time of my computer to this variable start time. And I'm doing the same thing for another a second variable start time one. You will see the difference uh, in a few moments. And it's just the same, so I assign the timer to these two variables. I read the cursor position uh, in x and y, and then assign it to x2 and y2. Uh, I have x2, y2, and x1 and y1. So we're going to be comparing the position uh, of the cursor in two different uh, sections of the code. So I assign it here uh, uh, initially to x2 and y2, the cursor position. Okay. 
Um, then initially I am formatting uh, because you guys are going to start with uh, a blank uh, workbook, you know, with uh, without anything. So the first time the macro runs, this just uh, when you click here, this section of the code. Uh, it populates uh, everything here. It writes these words, you know, the cells, uh, the column width, etc. So that's this section here. So initially, uh, I am uh, just deleting the contents from B1 and B6. So because uh, right now, for instance, it has some values, and every time I click it, it deletes everything and starts with a fresh, uh, with fresh values. Okay, so I'm deleting uh, the range B1 to B6. Everything here not B7 because this is something that uh, you don't want uh, to be deleted uh, this is actually the time you want uh, or you wish to uh, uh, the frequency for which you wish, uh, wish to move the uh, cursor okay then uh, this instructions from A1 to A7 I'm just uh, uh, including the values for cursor position, time elapsed. So basically just writing these words down from A1 to A7, okay? Uh, and you will see it's, it's the same. If you guys want to change the wording here, you can do that here in the code and put whichever words you want, whichever, if you think uh, you have better words that make more sense, go ahead and do it. And of course there are, <coughs> there should be better ways to do this. This is uh, the way it, it, it occurred to me, you know, and it's working, so I, uh, feel free if you know how to do this on a quicker way or better way you can modify the code uh, to do it in a better way okay uh, next this one for B4 interior color index so remember this uh, cell B4 changes color uh, depending on uh, how far into the into the time frame we are into uh, red yellow and orange so basically whenever we run the, the we hit the run button i uh i delete or put the color uh white or remove the coloring that it previously had okay so no color and the b7 the first time which is this when i uh color it in in with color index number six which is the color yellow just so that you know that this is the cell that uh, you must be uh modifying depending on your needs okay next range a1 to b7 uh, i'm just including borders on this range from a1 to b7 just uh, the cell border just so a visual uh, have a, a visual representation or a visual effect i should say of uh, uh, of the uh, cells that we're going to be using on the on the on the sheet on the worksheet um, then on columns uh, one, I'm sorry, columns A and B, I'm just uh, setting the column width, 21 pixels for column A and 15 pixels for column B. For column B, um, then I am uh, just telling here that column B should have an horizontal alignment as a center, and this just to align all of the text in the in the center. Okay, then I have an if here, and uh, whenever you run this for the first time, and if you uh, have an empty uh, time to activate here, it will set this 120100, which will mean that the first time you run this, you will have one minute. It will be uh, cycling for one minute. Of course, you can change that afterwards, but I wanted to include something here. Otherwise, it will be it will have zeros, and it will be... Uh, running the code and cycling without you, uh, without having a way to stop the macro. Of course, there's a way of hitting the ESC key, but uh, uh, but I decided to include this one minute. But the first time you run it, it will have it will be cycling for or looping every minute. Okay. Uh, if you have something, if the cell is empty, if P7 is empty, it will assign this value if it's not empty it will not go or get into this if condition and it will uh, it will remain or it will keep the value that you have set uh, previously okay and this uh, last line here is just to set the number format to our minutes and seconds to cell b7 okay all right so uh next moving into this uh, line of code seconds to activate so i'm um, uh, assigning to this variable uh, the time that uh, we wish for the macro to be cycling 
which uh, initially it's one minute. Right now I have 10 seconds here on my workbook, so it's gonna have it's gonna assign seconds to activate 10 seconds. Uh, and also seconds to activate. Uh, we're changing the format to hours, uh, minutes, and uh, and seconds. You know because you may have one hour or minutes or or a combination of hour minutes and seconds so it's just changing the format okay and I am assigning I have a counter here and I have assigned a zero to the counter and this counter is gonna tell us the times uh, the uh, uh, the macro activated the cursor and the left mouse button and the num lock key okay so that's this counter what uh, this counter does okay I'm gonna scroll a little bit down and here we start the loop with this do loop okay do events do events is just to refresh the cheat every pass and so that we get our values populated and refreshed every every, every cycle okay and we're gonna get the cursor position we're gonna be reading the cursor position on this loop remember we already read it here and we assign it to uh, variables x2 and y2 and now we're gonna assign it again to x y and y1 and then do a comparison. So we're going to read the cursor position and compare. If x1 and xy and x2, I'm sorry, and y1 and y2 are, are not equal, so if they are not equal, it means that the mouse moved. So if the mouse moves, it will go here. The start timer will be refreshed with a new timer. So we are going to uh, get the new timer time and assign it to the start timer. And also uh, uh, remove the color uh, index or the coloring from cell before. Why we do this? Because we may be at a time when this uh, cell is already uh, yellow, red, or orange, and we move uh, the cursor manually, and we want this to reset everything so the coloring will be reset. So we will go into this condition if uh, if we move the cursor, if uh, we leave the computer idle and, and the cursor is not moving, uh, we won't go into this if okay next we assigned uh, the seconds elapsed how many seconds have elapsed so we round the timer the timer right now minus the start timer so if we are not moving how many seconds have elapsed uh, will be the start timer remember the start timer we got the start timer here before going into the loop the first time okay so we assigned uh, get the value of the seconds elapsed and also the minutes elapsed. So it's the same thing, a start time, timer minus start time. Uh, here we have a, a 0.5 offset and divide to get the minutes and also assign the format hours, minutes and seconds to this variable. <coughs> okay, moving forward uh, uh, into the code. Okay, then what are we doing here? So on cell B1 we're gonna be displaying the coordinates and the values for my cursor in the x uh, axis and the y axis so we're uh, gonna be uh, displaying the cursor position in x and in y and this is on b1 okay on b2 we're gonna be displaying the minutes elapsed on b3 the seconds elapsed on b4 we're gonna be uh, displaying the counter backwards you know the counter how many seconds or minutes or hours remaining before the cursor moves and the left mouse button is pressed and the numlock key is pressed so how do we do this uh, we subtract the seconds to activate minus the seconds elapsed we add the offset here and we divide here by uh, 18 uh, 86,400 seconds to get uh, the value for hours, minutes and seconds and we give the format of our minutes and seconds okay on uh, cell B5 we uh, display the counter which is uh, how many times the uh, macro has activated or the cursor uh, has been moved by the macro by the macro and on cell B6 uh, which is this one we're gonna be displaying the total runtime so this uh, this time is uh, never reset or never refresh I mean never uh, set down to zero set back to zero it uh, it's always uh, running just for for you to know how many uh, hours minutes and seconds the, the macro has been running 
okay so that's uh, B uh, B6 and uh, here we have timer minus start time 1 so this is a, a different timer start time 1 because remember uh, start time might be refreshed if the mouse is moved but start time 1 we never refreshed it only we get the timer that initially when we started running the macro w once we hit the run button okay so that's why we use start time 1 here so again the offset and giving the format of our minutes and seconds okay now moving into this if okay so what we are doing here is just changing the coloring for cell B4 depending on the percentage of time that has passed and the time that is remaining for the macro to or the cursor the macro to activate the cursor and move the cursor okay so as you can see here it's we're only populating uh, or changing or manipulating cell B4 on all of these instructions so if the seconds elapsed are less than seconds to activate times 0.7 so this is if if the seconds elapsed are less than uh, 70 percent of the time we we set to activate um, the font color in cell B4 will be blue red green blue so red is zero green is zero and blue is 255 so that's why you see here the uh, the font color in blue color okay so it, if it's less than 70 percent uh, the cell uh, shading is white or the color of the cell is white and the font color is blue okay the next the else here if the threshold is between the, the second elapsed is between 70 percent and 80 percent the background the color index of the cell the, the background color will be number six color index, index number six which is yellow so the cell will uh, will be yellow and the font color will remain blue okay if we are between 80 percent and 90 percent the font the i'm sorry the the cell color will be uh, color index 46 which is orange so it will change from yellow to orange and the font color will remain blue okay if we are now seconds elapsed are greater than or equal to 90 percent or less than 95 percent the cell color will be color index number three which is red it will turn from yellow to orange and then to red and the font color will be white red green blue 255 255 255 will change the font color to white so we will have uh, white fonts on red background and that will remain as long as we have uh, the threshold uh, is equal to or between uh, 90 to 95 percent if it's greater or equal to 95 percent so after 95 percent we have two portions here of code so we will be swapping or changing between uh, so we have red background with white text and now we will have white background with red text okay red font 255 it's red zero zero it will leave us uh, 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 white font color with a white I'm sorry I'm sorry a red font color with a white background so we will be alternating that five percent uh, between uh, white and red so we were red background white font now we are white background red font and it will alternate again to red background white font okay for the last five percent and then afterwards after that happens we'll come we we'll come here to this part of the code okay if seconds elapsed are greater than or equal to seconds to activate so if we are now at 10 seconds and the and we didn't manually move the mouse we come into this if we get into this if and this is where the things happen okay uh, so cell before we will uh, the color index will be Excel none so we will remove the red color in the cell and set it back to white again uh we will uh set the font color uh, back to blue again it was white or either white or red uh we'll set it back to blue 
okay and then we will get into this four it's a loop so now we will move the cursor 500 times from left to right from left to right 100 uh, I'm not sorry 500 times why 500 times uh, in another computer I had this uh, number set to 100 but the computer has a lower processor so I was able to see the movement but when I uh, tested tested it on this computer with a faster processor uh, it appeared that the cursor didn't move because it do it, it does it very fast so it, it didn't it was it was not uh, uh, visible you know so I set it to 500 and now it's visible okay and then so we're gonna loop here 500 times from left to right and we're gonna move the cursor here we have two uh, nested uh, fours so these four we're gonna move the cursor 100 pixels to the right so from left to right 100 pixels pixels to the right and then 100 pixels to the left and we're gonna do that 500 times so 100 to the right 100 to the left 100 to the right 100 to the left so 500 times okay it does it very quick and very very fast so you can move these uh, numbers as uh, as you wish if you see that your computer is very slow or very fast you can in increase these numbers okay so we move 100 pixels to the right in 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 uh, in x axis y axis i am not moving y axis so you can also move or increment or decrement y axis if you want to move i'm only moving x so you will, will only see that it's a movement similar to this one you can move it on y axis up and down or on circles or on square you know you can change this uh whichever way you want for practical purposes i'm just moving left or right okay so we move to the right 100 pixels and then we move to the left from 99 to back to zero uh, with uh, steps uh, decrementing one set cursor uh, position only x uh, axis uh, again I add uh, uh, the j variable but it's decrementing so I am actually decrementing so I'm 100 pixels from left to right and 100 pixels from right to left and we do this 500 times okay so that's the the instructions to move uh, the cursor then after that finishes we click on the left mouse button down so we click on the left mouse button and then we wait 100 milliseconds we sleep that is the part where I show you this uh, declaration of sleep this uh, library in milliseconds okay so we're gonna sleep 100 milliseconds why do we do this because depending on your processor some processors are very fast and uh, it, it, if you don't ask for a sleep it is as if the the instruction was not done you know and it, it's very fast so I've uh, I tested it with 50 here on my other computer it works with 50 on this computer which is faster I had to include a, a 100 otherwise I wouldn't see that the the mouse left button gets clicks gets clicks clicked and it uh, and it produces a, a, a visible result in Excel okay so that's why I'm I am waiting I'm giving it 100 milliseconds to do this instruction or for wait until it executes the next instruction then the next instruction is just depressing the left mouse button so we click it down and then we leave uh, or depress the mouse the mouse button so it's it goes from down to up and again we sleep for 100 milliseconds okay so that now that we click the left mouse button and we did this that's the second input we go for the third input and we use the send keys command or function and we use the num lock uh, variable to tell the computer to uh, click the num lock key okay and, uh, and after we do that we sleep 100 milliseconds and then we do the same thing again we click the num look key and sleep for 100 uh, milliseconds why do we do it twice because if you have it uh, just to return the num lock uh, to its previous state if you have it already activated with the if it's activated already we deactivate we deactivated with this instruction and then we activate it again so it returns to its previous state if you do not have it activated 
we activate it here and then we deactivate it so it returns to its previous state okay so now let me show you which one is the non block key many of you might know many of you may not know so let me show you so this is a keyboard these are the left these are the left uh, left uh, side keys and if you go here to the right uh, part or the right right side of your keyboard you will see the num uh, the numerical keyboard and this is the num lock key okay basically what this does is just uh, activates your uh, numeric uh, keyboard if you do not have this uh, num lock key activated oh by the way when you uh, click on it this uh, this led here are another indication lit, uh, lights up. When you click on it again, it light, it uh, it turns off, turns on and off depending on if it's activated or not. If you if it's not activated and if you press the eight key here, it won't type an eight. It will actually uh, just move the cursor up as if hitting this key. If you press the four, it will uh, move the the cursor to the left or the highlighted cell to the left. Uh, this would be page up, page down, and ins, delete, enter, you know. Uh, so if it's not activated, that happens. So let me show you that in Excel. Okay, right now I don't have my NumLock key activated, so I'm going to press number 8 key, and you will see that I'm going to go up. Okay, I'm pressing number 8, it goes up. I'm pressing now number 2 key, it goes down. 4 key goes left, 6 key goes to the right. Now I'm going to press the NumLock key. I have pressed the NumLock key already. I see the LED is lit here on my keyboard. And now I'm going to press the A, number 8 key again. And it types uh, number 8. Okay, so the key, the, the arrow is not being used. And now I have the numbers. If I press 4, 1, 2, 3, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's now that the numbers are, are, are used. If I press the NumLock key again and I press number 2, this happens. It goes down and it goes up. But if uh, if I press it, I'm doing it, pressing it and depressing it right now, nothing happens. So that's why I'm using NumLock key. So we do have a, a, a keyboard input. The system detects a keyboard input, but nothing happens. You know, and the application that you have right now uh, set focus to, if it's uh, Excel, Word, PowerPoint or Outlook or any other application, nothing happens. It's just you're pressing the NumLock key. Okay, so that's what the macro does uh, as well. And we are um, doing those two things, those, I'm sorry, three things. Moving the cursor from left to right, uh, clicking the mouse, the left mouse button, and clicking and unclicking the, clicking twice the num, num lock key. Okay, then after that uh, sleep, uh, we also get that to read the timer, uh, to and, and set the value to the start timer again and we uh, update our counter with incremental counter with one and we finish this if then uh, we get again the cursor position just to read if it's moving uh, and we set the cursor position to x2 and y2 variables and we return to the loop and we return back here to the do do events get cursor, get cursor again and see and do the same thing all over again displaying my values displaying my counter displaying everything and do all the things that I already explained endlessly okay and after the loop then the answer routine okay uh, I'm gonna go right now to show you the code again from the start here's the cost the start of the code I'm gonna pause for a few seconds so that you can pause the video and you can take note of the of the uh, instructions and the code okay okay you can pause the video to get everything I'm gonna put a marker here on the do I'm gonna scroll down okay from here to here put another marker I'm gonna pause a few seconds again so that you can pause the video and uh, and get all of these uh, instructions and commands okay you can pause the video there and I'm gonna scroll further down and this is the end of the code and sub 
Okay, I'm gonna just pause for a few seconds here again so that you can pause the video and and be able to read and type all of the of the code. Okay, let me remove these uh, markers here. Return back up. Remove here the the do. Okay, and that's that's all the code. You can go ahead and type it. Okay, so let me show you how to create it from scratch. So I'm gonna copy everything just for for ease and to do it faster I'm gonna I'm not gonna type this all back again but you will have to type it but you have a, you can pause the video and copy the code it's not uh, it's not that extensive okay so I already copied that I'm going to close this I'm gonna open a new file okay and uh, open a new blank workbook I'm gonna close this one I'm gonna save it okay so you guys will will start with a blank workbook as this one okay you already have your developer tab uh, visible so you click here on developer click on visual basic you need to go over here insert the user form but then uh, we're not gonna use insert the form we're gonna insert a module okay so here we have the uh, Visual Basic module you will see it here okay Visual Basic module and there you will type you will start typing here the code right okay the here and here blah 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 I'm not gonna type anything I'm just gonna paste my code here okay same code that I showed you right now okay I'm gonna mark it here so that you can if you have any doubts you can compare it here I'm gonna stop uh, let's see here on the do and that's it okay it's the same code that I just copied I just pasted it here okay and um, of course you will be typing here private exactly the same as I'm showing here private declare um, function um, set cursor cursor pause etc so you will type exactly the same that I show you here that I show you everything you type it as, as is here okay I'm gonna delete this because I'm, I was just showing you how to type it it's the same thing okay so now that you have already everything there let's go ahead and save the workbook okay the subroutine is called mouse move let's go ahead and save the workbook so I'm gonna save it here on my downloads and initially you will see that you will have Excel workbook selected you uh, need to select Excel macro enabled workbook okay so make sure you select macro enabled workbook otherwise you you're go not gonna be saving the code okay select Excel SM and uh, I have some other versions here but uh, let's say uh, mouse move I already have ma have mouse move here so I'm gonna uh, save the one as mouse move um, YT YouTube let's say okay save it okay so this is my my file name mouse move YouTube you will see it here as well mouse move YT YouTube XLSM so make sure it's with a macro version or a macro enabled file okay well, by the way there's uh, this is the longest line here uh, there's uh, nothing more to the right here so no need to worry so I've shown you all of the code and then how are we going to uh, enable it here okay so one important thing is that we're using cheat one 
So all of the instructions here make reference to cheat one and the cells within cheat one. So make sure to uh, use cheat one or if you want to rename the cheat, well, you will also have to rename all these instructions uh, that say or that have cheat one within. Okay, so everything, if you want to change the, ch the, the cheat tab, just change it on every instruction here that makes reference to cheat one. Otherwise, leave it as is with cheat one and you shouldn't have any issues. Okay, so um, we have two ways of running the macro. One is going here to macros and you will see that our macro, the sub name is mouse move. So this is the macro name. So one is uh, selecting, one way is selecting mouse move and run. I don't, I do not suggest doing this because you will have to do it uh, this uh, this way over and over again so it's several clicks click here click here click here uh, depending if you have several uh, open workbooks with different macros you will see all of them here but the easiest way is just to uh, uh, assigning a button to a macro okay so we you should go here to uh, insert let me just drag this to the right so you can have a better view here and then select shapes okay and you can select any of these shapes uh, for consist consistency uh, reasons or purposes I'm going to use rectangle rounded corners which is the same one that I had uh, on my first macro so I'm going to select this one you can select a rectangle a triangle or a circle so I have that one and I'm gonna draw a square with round corners you can draw it whichever size you want I'm gonna draw it like this and then <coughs> uh, right mouse or right click on the figure on the shape and edit text and type here the word run or execute or macro whichever word makes sense to you and uh, let's just resize it and then let's move it over here and now we want to assign the macro to the button so again right mouse click or right click on the uh, shape so you will get this menu and then go all the way here to assign macro select assign macro with the left mouse button and select the mouse move macro which is the one that we have over here just uh, select it mouse move and click OK okay so mouse move remember mouse move is the one that we have here okay so let me resize this and uh, remember the first time that uh, you click it always uh, writes this text and and cleans the the cells and everything so but just the first time you know once you get into the loop this is not being done over and over again just the first time so now we're gonna click it and remember since we don't have anything it's gonna assign a one minute on this instruction just to uh, uh, prevent it from looping uh, endlessly with a zero value okay so I'm gonna click right now and you will see that it will start running with one minute and there you go it's running with a one minute value here and it's running as uh, if you move the uh, the mouse it will uh, refresh everything except of course b6 it's this counter is it's uh, never refreshed but if I stop uh, moving it I'm gonna leave it there and let's wait one minute so that you guys see that it's uh, it's working cell b1 is no longer being refreshed the coordinates or the values of my cursor position it's uh, it's static uh, time elapsed cell b2 it's incrementing 19 seconds 20 etc uh, cell b3 it's also incrementing seconds in a decimal format cell b4 is decrementing it started on 1 59 seconds 58 it's now decremented 27 26 times activated zero it hasn't activated yet it hasn't moved the cursor yet and the total runtime it's it's uh, it's incrementing okay 17 seconds 16 it's now yellow we're uh, 
after 70%, now we, we are between 80 uh, between 80 and 90%, that's why it's orange. We're now in uh, between 90 and 95%, it's red with white font. It's now after 95, alternating and moving. There you go. So it, it moved uh, after one minute. Okay, and it will be doing that over and over and over again until you stop the macro or until the you have a blackout or you power off the computer or you, you run out of uh, uh, battery power on your UPS or run down of electricity or you click double click uh, left mouse button on a cell or if you uh, click your keyboard on a on a letter okay so I'm gonna wait 22 more seconds to show you that it will activate again of course it's gonna select the same cell because I haven't moved my mouse D9 so it uh, okay it's now orange between 70 and I mean between 80 and 90 percent now it's over 90 percent of the threshold 95 percent alternating red and white it moves and there there you go so moves moves the cursor as if uh, you were physically moving the mouse it uh, clicks the left mouse button and it also uh, sends a num lock key as if you were clicking on your num lock keyword okay i'm going to stop double clicking here and it stops okay uh let's do it now for five seconds i'm sorry 50 not 55 <laughs> okay five seconds so it's going to run every five seconds okay i'm moving uh and let me stop here four three two one and it moves yeah. okay and selects the cell d7 okay it's about to move again so it will be moving every five seconds okay the total runtime is greater than 10 seconds or now uh 15 seconds because remember we are moving left and right uh, we're looping there so that takes a few seconds to loop uh remember we have a couple of slips there with 100 milliseconds uh, uh, each so that delays our macro but the counter the total runtime doesn't stop that's why you see a difference so up to now it's been running or it's been activated seven times it's about to be activated eight times so it will be doing that over and over again you know so um, let me stop double click here now let's ask it to uh, do it over and over again every second uh, when we when the macro gave the uh, width to the uh, uh, to the uh, columns columns a and b it also uh, moved the size of the bottom let me uh, return it to more or less the the size that it, it had okay so I'm gonna run it with one second now okay uh, as long as I'm moving here it won't activate but as soon as I stop moving my mouse I'm doing I'm moving my mouse with my hand I'm gonna stop now and it's moving so it will be moved every second by the macro okay I don't have my mouse I'm sorry I don't have my hand on over the mouse right now the macro is moving it I'm not moving it okay so every second okay I'm gonna move it now with my hand I'm gonna stop it and uh, so you can input here anytime you desire anytime you like uh, let's say nine minutes so uh, so I can leave it running here and step away from my keyboard and my mouse uh, and if I don't come back in nine minutes the macro will move the cursor the left uh, mouse button will be pressed and depressed and the num lock key on my keyboard will be pressed twice so if I don't come back in nine minutes or in 10 or 20 30 hour, 30 uh, minutes or in one hour uh, the mouse will continue to move by itself or the cursor I should say that physically the mouse the mouse in your desk doesn't move you know but only the cursor but it was as if you actually physically move the mouse so it will be moving uh, uh, continually in this loop uh, with the frequency you set on cell B7 okay so that's it uh, once you finish uh, remember to 
uh, save your document and save it on a location where you can find it and you can open it again and again and you will uh, you can execute it uh, whenever you you may need it okay so that's it guys I hope you uh, like the video hope this is uh, useful for you this was something that you needed and uh, now you are <coughs> able to use on your computer with Excel you can program it by yourself instead of downloading some uh, weird code from from the net not knowing what you're installing on your computers okay so I've shown you the code here's the code you can uh, compare it or if you uh, you know someone that uh, someone that knows how to code in Excel tell him to take a look at the code you will see that uh, uh, there's nothing hidden here on the code and it's uh, harmless and the only thing that this macro does is those three things that I show you well refresh these values and move the cursor uh, click on the left mouse button and uh, click on the num lock keys of your keyboard okay guys that's it uh, peace cheers I hope you liked the video if you liked it click on subscribe and click on the like button I usually upload uh, uh, video game uh, videos uh, but every now and then I'll be uploading uh, Visual Basic uh, videos. I have some other macros that I have written for my uh, my own use to, like for instance, copy uh, things from Excel and paste them in 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 PowerPoint, like uh, graphs or charts or or certain ranges, you know, more uh, into a specific location within a PowerPoint presentation. That's why I use the right. Uh, mouse button to uh, like resize charts or move them within the uh, within the PowerPoint presentation you also need to use the position of your cursor so I may be uploading later some other uh, Visual Basic uh, macros for you guys to use so if you'd like uh, click on subscribe and uh, like the video okay I hope you liked it and it's useful for you guys again uh, Cheers, everyone. Peace. Take care. And I'll be seeing you again. Hope to see you again on another video. Take care, guys. And goodbye. Adios.